Kodo is one of the strongest, smartest, and most controversial characters in Jutsu Kaisen. He has a ridiculously fast-paced character arc and goes from brutal borderline berserker to charming gentle giant in under three episodes. He has a self-proclaimed IQ of 530,000, judges people based on their type of woman, manages to creep Itadori out, which is a real feat, and on top of that, with Boogie Woogie, has one of the most fascinating powers in the story. In this video, you will learn everything there is to know about Toto. How strong he is, how smart he is, that his awesome voice actor is actually German, I know, the hell? And of course, the hidden genius behind his philosophy and design as a character that make him one of the most loved characters by fans and one of the most disliked characters in the story. This is the character analysis of Aoi Toto. My friend. Okay, let's get the elephant out of the room, as in, let's talk about the elephant. Remember how these guys are all supposed to be high schoolers? Well, Toto looks like a 20-year-old philosophy student <laughs> a truckload of protein powder. Now that I think about it, that actually sums up his personality pretty perfectly as well. Huh. In terms of power, Akutami introduces Todo as a realistic measuring stick for Itadori and Ko. Someone who is a whole level or two above them, but more in reach than the walking and talking calamity that is Satoru Gojo. In fact, Todo is undoubtedly one of the, if not the, strongest among the current students. And yes, Fushiguro doing a kamikaze attack doesn't count. Despite being only a second year student, Todo is already a full-fledged first grade sorcerer. Just so you have some comparison, that is the same grade as Nanami or Yaga, who is a school principal. As if this wasn't enough, however, most of the time Todo doesn't even use his extraordinary cursed ability, but simply raw physical strength. Not only does he have a ridiculous amount of brute power, but is also surprisingly agile. <laughs> When things turn dark, however, which pretty much only means special grade kind of dark, Toto unpacks his innate jutsu ability, the Boogie Woogie, that allows him to switch the position of anything with cursed energy within his range with a clap of his hands. For instance, he can change himself out with the location of another person, or switch two different objects other than himself as well. <laughs> Now, is this technique ridiculously powerful? Obviously. But I want you to appreciate for a moment what an unusual matchup this power is for a Hulk-like guy like Todo. Because once again here, as you know from my other videos, Akutami absolutely loves playing with expectations. Usually the trope of the beefcake character in anime is kind of predictable. Either he's a lot weaker and more stupid than all the weak looking people around him. Or he gets a boring power like making his body harder or having a big weapon or something. Basically that's the anime guy who always goes down first. The idea here being that we as the audience go, ooh, he looks strong, just how will our skinny hero beat them? And then we're super surprised or whatever how powerful the small guy actually is. Let's be honest, this trope was basically dead after David versus Goliath, but it keeps coming back for some reason. Anyways, Toto flips that trope on its head in the sense that he looks incredibly strong, and he actually is incredibly strong. And not only that, he also has an ability that requires him to basically play 4D chess with his opponents all the time, trying to figure out if, what, when, and where he's gonna switch. <laughs> A buff dude who is actually buff and has an elegant ability that requires some brains. Hey anime industry, was it really that hard to come up with that sort of character? Because on top of his power, oh boy, Todo is a pretty sharp cookie. 
Not sure if he's 530,000 IQ points type of sharp, as he likes to claim, but he's definitely no dummy either. So let's talk about Toto's big brain and what exactly is going on in there so that we can get two as different sounding exclamations from him as this. <laughs> Let's talk about Toto's personality. <laughs> Out of all the things to love about Toto, my favorite thing is probably the way he gets introduced into the story. Basically, Akutami hits us with all the worst parts of his personality to paint this picture of a blood-hungry idiot who judges people based on the taste of women, which he does. But as you will see, surprisingly, there is a lot more behind this. Anyways, so after basically beating Megumi into a pulp for having a decent view of women, <laughs> We get a pretty rapid turnaround for his character. First, we see him going against the plan to assassinate Yuji, basically having as little respect for his classmates and teachers as for Megumi. Nice. Well, still no reason to like him, I guess. But at least we get that this man acts based on his own principle and isn't just a dick to Megumi for the sake of it. And then, of course, we get his interaction with Itadori and, oh boy, it's no surprise that these two click. After making up a completely fake flashback in his head that has more plot development than most regular anime do, Toto suddenly sees Itadori as his best friend. My best friend! And from then on mentors Yuji and brings him to a completely different level within a mere number of minutes, suddenly turning him into an absolute fan favorite. Oh, and can we talk about the fact that Toto got rejected in his own fantasy and chose Itadori over his love interest? What a true bro. Thanks, bro. Hey. We're bros, bro. Now, we don't really know if these fake memories have something to do with Yuji or whether they simply are part of Toto's quirky personality, as I personally like to think. After all, in his fight with Hanami, Toto has an entire imaginary tactical meeting with his favorite pop idol in the blink of a second. <laughs> So I think that crafting a made-up backstory for some of the few people he can actually respect in this world, next to anyone who's stronger than him, which is basically all the special grades, I guess, is very much in character for Todo. And I think it's this that proves just how smart a cookie he actually is. After all, I think you will find it pretty hard to describe this creative ability together with the ridiculously fast analytical information processing he has as anything but intelligent. On top of all this, Todo is an extremely smart and dexterous fighter when he has to, immediately unpacking his curse technique to its fullest against Hanami after realizing that this is an enemy that he cannot beat with power alone. However, this sort of intelligence, while without any doubt impressive, pales in comparison to the part of Toto's character that I find truly impressive. His abs. I'm just kidding, the truly impressive part about Toto is actually his philosophy and approach to the central moral question of the story that makes him one of the most wise-looking characters in the story. <laughs> Toto's answer to what makes a good life worth living is basically existentialism. While just like Nanami or Mahito, he understands that life doesn't have meaning in itself and that very much in the Buddhist way of thinking, everything is fleeting, Toto also believes that people are capable of making their own purpose and find a reason to love and embrace life. His clear understanding of the natural world even gives him a better understanding of the flow of cursed energy. And other than Mahito, for example, who, as I explained in my last video, wants to fully embrace his nature and instincts, Todo gives Yuji agency by telling him to yes, accept being part of nature, but also having his own will by swallowing his anger. <laughs> Toto 
So basically, Toto is someone who fights against the natural order of things for the sake of the love that he feels for other people. He even fights Hanami, who literally is an embodiment of nature. In fact, as ironic as it might seem, believe me, I know, love is actually the big theme behind Toto's character. So much so that Akutami even draws his cursed energy as taking the form of little hearts. Love in general is a very prominent theme in Jujutsu Kaisen that often is contrasted with the curses. However, what appears as comical and over the top on the outside when Toto suddenly treats Yuji as if they'd known each other since birth is actually Toto embracing his friendship and sudden brotherly love for Yuji as one of the driving factors in his life, just as his love for Takada. And even though they aren't real, to Toto they are and they give him meaning and happiness, not by accident, but by choice. Nice fight up, boy! <laughs> And even his seemingly macho-like habit of judging people based on their type of partner gets twisted on its head when we learn that he isn't just a superficial douche, but actually has inherited this quirk as well as his philosophy from this mysterious motorcycle woman that we meet in his flashback. And so I believe what Toto actually does by asking this question is figuring out whether or not people can actually state their true feelings and know what they love. I don't think it's that everyone needs to love Jennifer Lawrence, it's that Yuji has no issue saying what he loves while Megumi does. Though I think you agree that it might be a bit over the top punching him into the ground for this. The fact that not everyone is able to state clearly what they love or even know what they love is something Toto has to learn to understand, his basic need as a character. As a result, I think that Toto is written as a twist on the trope that strong guys are always stupid and for some reason weak, making him one of the strongest and wisest characters in the story, while still being as batshit crazy as the rest of them are. We do know what <laughs> He is one of the central guides to Itadori's growth and without any doubt part of the relationships that Yuji will someday have to discover as his true source of meaning and happiness in life. In short, pretty much as most characters in Jujutsu Kaisen, Aoi Todo might as well be the main character. Like Maki or Foshigoro, he's pretty much peak shonen protagonist material. And that's what makes him such a lovable character. <laughs> What better way to continue than talk about Todo's major enemy in the story, both physically and philosophically? Watch my analysis of Hanami, an absolutely fascinating character, by clicking right here, or check out my other Jujutsu Kaisen character analysis here. Thanks for watching. Peace.